All right, good morning. It's, I guess it's Sunday morning again. And today I'm back from my week of travel and I'm gonna begin doing some troubleshooting on the, uh, on the plasma cam. I'm just gonna shoot some video today. I don't know if this is something that anybody would be interested in, but as I said before, uh, plasma cam support is actually really good. But they give you quite a bit of tools to actually do the uh, do the testing yourself, so you can you can do quite a bit. So broke out the handy dandy multimeter today, and we'll be going through some of the testing. Um, I'll shoot a bunch of video, and then you know I might just kind of skim through a few things. But uh, again, like I said, the video manual that comes with this system is very in depth. So I'd like to get my ducks in a row so that tomorrow morning I can contact uh, those guys out in Colorado and figure out what's going on. All right, so I'm just gonna kinda keep it rolling. I'll edit stuff out. Initialize the machine and carefully hold the carriage and pantry all the way into the corner near the limit switches. Get someone to help you swap the motor connections to the main wiring harness. All right, so I do still have the old wiring harness. So what I'm going to do to rule this out that it's a wiring issue, I'm actually just going to soft swap some of these things around, do a quick test, see if it initializes, and if it does, then I know actually what I've got is a wiring problem, uh, and see maybe I did something wrong when I swapped the wiring harness out. So first thing I need to do, I'm just going to go ahead. I got power off. So, you know, I yanked the power, you can see, I pulled the power from the machine, so I didn't want to have any live power to it. So now I've got, I've isolated the harness. And if I come over and initialize. Ah, it's the harness. So, it's the wiring harness. And I can fix that pretty easily. All right, guys, there we go. Back to business. All right, so we're just doing a quick test again just to make sure that everything's working. So, the wiring harness is in place. It initialized just like that, doing what it's supposed to do. And when I do some tests here, which I guess I'm off the screen a little bit, but that's okay. My X, Y is right, my X, Y, Z goes, so it hits, you know, everything stops where it's supposed to, goes the direction it's supposed to, a nice smooth movement again, I'm going to turn it off for now, we should get an error message popped up, we're back in business. Alright, sorry for the noise in the background, uh, got uh, a bunch of kids doing a drum circle class here today. Gotta love it. But anyways, so it turns out it was just the wiring harness. Something was up with the wiring harness. I must either something wasn't seated right, or it wasn't it was uh, shorting out, something along those lines. But in swapping harnesses around, I was able to isolate the problem, get it resolved. Everything is working great now. So I think what I'm going to do for this next uh, video is actually talk a little bit about drawing and how you you go from a concept to a final uh, final part. I just recently got a request for a custom order, which is a perfect example of a time to do this. So that's what I'm going to work on for this week. Have a great day. All right, so on today's video, I talked a little bit about a custom uh, sign that I was asked to do. And it was kind of a good excuse to do uh, this sign anyways, because I've been wanting to, to do one uh, for quite a while. And so I'm going to use this as also as a way to just kind of give you guys an idea of what it takes to really start from scratch from an idea and get it into the plasma cam system. So the first thing that I would do is, uh, so in this case, we were asked to, um, to do a sign for the 173rd Airborne. And as you guys know, I do quite a bit of military uh, uh, inspired signs. So uh, Plasma cam, and I've got just the, I do have the design edge uh, 4.21, so the latest version of the software, but I don't have all the upgrades, all the bells and whistles uh, on it yet. Uh, at some point I will, but for right now I just have the, 
Um, I have the advanced version, which does give me some capabilities, but right now I am limited to uh, importing graphics that are BMP files. All right, so I can import BM, I'm sorry, BMP, TIFF, it does say JPEG and DXF, but I've tried JPEGs and it won't let me read them. Maybe I'm doing something wrong there. But either way, what I typically do is I start with a video or a, uh, a file. In this case, we're doing the 173rd. And so there's the, this is the JPEG, I think. This is the BMP. Yeah, that's, oh, PNG. I couldn't do a PNG file. All right, so I've got a BMP file. And when I open it, the first thing it does, it looks at that file and it says, okay, well, what, what is this? And we need to know what the background images are, background colors. So I know I want to take the white out. I'm going to take that out. Um, the reds are probably not uh, going to show up right either. Um, so as you click around in here, you're getting those different, uh, different colors. Right? So it starts to figure out what's going on and you click next. <clears throat> And that gives you a bit of information about how it's going. So actually, I'm, I made a mistake, it looks like. I probably shouldn't have clicked on that gray, which I think was, I think it was this one. Now I can't deselect it for some reason. Oh, I've got control, there we go. So let's take a look. Well, that's looking right, but I think we do want to have some of that out of there so that we can at least make that delineation. Now on the, um, on the sign, I don't know that I'm actually gonna put this border in. So you know what, let's just leave that out because I don't think I am gonna put that border in. I think it's, um, I was asked to do a subdued version, so not the, the multiple colors like this. Uh, maybe for a multicolor one, I would put that in, but I might just hand, hand paint that instead. So this is what we're left with in our black and white, it starts to look like you know, what we're going to use. But you notice there's a lot of stuff in here that, that are showing up. We're going to have to clean this drawing up quite a bit before we can actually use it. I might try and get a couple as I just kind of pick a few things to help us clean it up a little bit. That looks a lot better. And so we just click, uh, in this case we're going to use the defaults, but solid, uh, you, can, you can go through and kind of clean things up a little bit, like speckle with. I don't know if you guys can see in the video, but you got, there's a little bit of pixelation in here. It can take some of those things out and smooth things out for you automatically. But we're just going to leave it like this for now. We'll say next, and it's converted into vectors. And at this point, we've got a, uh, something that we can start with. And what's even nice, as I click out of it, this color lets me know that it is a solid, a single object. Right? There's no breaks in it. So in fact, this came out so well just from the start, that it makes it a whole lot easier in general to work on it. So now we've got to figure out how we want to actually cut this. Looks like this will be okay, except, all right, so if this is solid, this piece right here is solid, and I cut this A, everything on the inside is gonna drop out. It's just gonna fall right out. So we've got to fix that, right? So let's zoom in on that, and you can just press the F1 key, and it zooms into where your cursor is. And I also noticed, yeah, it's a little wavy here. The line, this side came in straight, but this one didn't. So I might actually go through and clean it up even more. And in fact, let's do that. So the first thing that I would do is I need to break this object apart. I know that, well, there's my curvy stuff. And it looks like that's kind of about where the line starts. So what I've just done is I've created, and you can see the color change too. I've broken this apart. So now I can actually delete that piece and it goes away. But we want to draw it back in and we want it to be nice and straight. Well, there's a function in here that lets you just extend or trim things, right? And so you can just click on it and that thing actually just goes and goes and goes, right? And then we'll do it again on this side to match it up and then we'll trim the excess off. So now that we've got everything here, we can just tell it to join back up and now that's one object again. So easy way to get things cleaned up. It does take time. And now uh, we'll talk a little bit about how we're gonna address keeping this piece from falling out of the middle. So typically what I just do is I take a line and I'll draw a line because basically we need to connect the two sides. And then we'll copy this line so that it's the same angle. You know what, I don't think I want it to be that angle. Now that I'm looking at it. So we've made a copy, but it doesn't quite flow right. So what we'll do is we'll use the rotate 
functionality. And I'm going to rotate from this end here down to this end. And I want to just bring that over a little bit so that visually it looks a little better. Now we're going to go back to that trimming piece and we're going to pull that out of the middle and then trim up the excess. And now we just need to select the whole thing, join it together, and we'll zoom back out. And now we've got a piece that will hold together. Now, personally, I actually don't like the way that looks. I'm going to go through and change that. But I'm just trying to give you uh, an idea of how you go about, uh, or how I go about doing some of these things. So I don't like the way that's coming out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to make some adjustments to that, clean that up. Uh, but I have got to do that for every piece here. Now, this part from here to here is really signifying the border that was stitched into it. And we're not going to actually put that border in place by uh, a cut. We're actually going to use paint in that one. So we can pull that out completely. And now you see we're starting to get a bit more you know, ready to go. But if we were to take like this piece right here, everything that you see in there would get cut out, which means it would just go away. Right? Well, this is a two-dimensional piece. If I were doing a three-dimensional piece where I was going to layer things, then that wouldn't matter so much because I really could allow that piece to cut, get cut out. The, remained, the remaining pieces that were left in there would show up and then I would just layer things over on top of it or underneath it to, uh, to make the sign. But typically what I end up doing for, let's say, let's take an easy one like this one where I do want to delineate the part but I don't necessarily want it to cut out because basically if we made this cut, all of this in here would go away. So the easiest thing to do is take the rectangle tool and let's do it right in the middle. Just kind of take a, a shot here in the middle. It doesn't have to be too big, right? About there or so. Let's move this down just a little bit. A lot of this I do by eye. You know, it is CAD and I can, I can get very, very precise with it, but sometimes when you do that, it loses that natural feeling to it. And so I try not to do that. I try to just um, do things by eye as much as possible. But once this is here, we can come into this cutting tool, that trim and extend tool, and we can say, okay, cut that apart. And we'll zoom back out and zoom in over here, cut that part out. And I can take that rectangle and I can just delete it, but I want to use that again because I want some cut consistency. But I could just delete it. Let me move it out of the way so you can see what happens though. Because now what we've done is we've slipped that apart. So as of right now, what would happen is it would pierce and just come around here and stop. So it cuts a line into the metal without um, the whole thing going away. But that's an awful lot of sign to be held together by these tiny little parts here, right? So let's Let's do something here. Uh, I think first thing we're going to do, let's go into snaps and I want orthogonal snap. So what I'm doing now is telling this that it can only rotate in certain directions. And I'm going to tell it to rotate from this corner here to here. And now notice it won't let me go anywhere. Oh, there's a 45 and then a 90, right? That's what the orthogonal uh, snap does. And so if we move it, and remember we're still on that orthogonal snap, so we can't do anything, right? I can go 45 degrees or 90 degrees. So it's a great way to make adjustments. So I'm going to come here. Right about here looks like it's centered up pretty well. I'm kind of I'm eyeballing these parts here. And I'll come in. And I often use shortcut buttons to do some of these things, but I wanted you guys to see a little bit about what it takes. We'll just trim that piece out. And oops, I zoomed way out. And then we'll move this one straight down since we're still in orthogonal mode. I could have redrawn it, but sometimes it's easier just to move some stuff around. And we'll trim this piece out. And let's go back into that so we can see the whole drawing. And then now we can just take that rectangle and delete it. And it's gone. And now we've got a solid uh, connection between the pieces. It's not going to fall apart, but we've drawn a line. Basically, we've cut a line into it. Uh, to do this. And I've got to go through on this design and for every piece in here, I, if I want this just cut into it and not to fall out, I've got to go through and start breaking this, you know, breaking these cuts apart so that it'll cut lines into it without, uh, without actually 
uh, dropping the whole piece out. So that's the basics of it. I just wanted to give you a quick tour on how I do some of these things. Um, just to give you an idea though of what happens when we actually cut, uh, we come up to settings and tell it that we're going to, whoops, machine, sorry, and that we're going to convert to cut path. And I would come out here to this, say this edge where I wanted it to start and tell it to convert. Now it'll, it'll ask me if I want to use the sheet edge. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so I'll say no. Do I want to automatically convert holes? Yes. Okay. So that's it. And you can see for some of these areas where things are going to fall out, you can see that it didn't create a cut path because it knows it's just going to fall out. Right? Same thing for here and here. It's like, yeah, I don't really need to do that because, well, it's not really going to do anything. And if we wanted to, we could actually even come in here and do a cut preview. And, uh, well, rapid cut speed is pretty fast. Let me, let me bring this down a little bit so you can see what it would look like and say start. And so you'll see as it's tracing around, this is what it would do to make this piece. And you can see it turns red as it goes through. So we're following around here. And maybe I will speed this up just so you can uh, see how it does. So rapid speed, that's when it's going in between cuts. And uh, in reality, I actually uh, keep that set to about a thousand, a uh, thousand inches per minute. Cut speed on something like this on 14 gauge, because it's got a lot of detail in it, I actually only cut it about 90 inches a minute. Although my machine's capable of cutting this at like 240 inches a minute, um, it starts to get a little jerky. And I noticed that it, it, the cut quality goes down. Um, and again, this is because I don't have some of the upgrades to the software. Uh, it could actually uh, manage some of that. So as it's going into the corners, it can slow itself down so it doesn't shake or rattle so much. But that's what it would do. That's how we would cut it. Hope this helped.